Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe for a better bond with your siblings. Maybe. Today we're going to lead the team as Leonardo. As Master Splinter's right-hand man, you've got a big responsibility to keep your brothers and your city safe, not to mention maintaining a warrior's physique with a diet of cheese, bread, and pizza sauce. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to make sure we've got leadership skills, even for wild cards like Mikey and hotheads like Raph. At least Donnie isn't difficult. Second, we'll get the sword skills we need to deal with the Foot Clan. And finally, we'll make sure we're one with the shadows. For stats, we're gonna use the standard point array and run into an issue right away. Leo's one of those characters that's not really bad at anything. So we're gonna more focus on what we need for the build and fill in the rest the best we can. Dexterity's number one. The turtles are remarkably quick for, well, turtles. Grisma after that, keeping a group of teens in line requires quite a bit of it. Wisdom will follow, Splinter isn't raising anyone without self-discipline. Constitution next, a turtle can take a lot of hits, no surprise there. Intelligence is lower than I like, but Donnie can fill in the gaps, and Strength will get bumped up by our racial bonuses, so we'll dump that. If you know about the turtle race, you probably saw this coming, but Leonardo is a turtle. They get plus two Strength and plus one Wisdom. They have Claws, making their unarmed attacks deal 1d4 plus their Strength modifier, or zero in our case, we're using Ninjatos, so who cares. You can hold your breath for an hour, you have a natural armor of 17 AC, which is nice because you can't wear armor. Thankfully, you can retreat into your shell as an action for plus 4 to AC, advantage on constitution and strength saves. Now, you can't move until you come back out, and you have disadvantage on dexterity saves. But if someone starts throwing fireballs, pop out as a bonus action. Finally, you get the survival skill from survival instincts. For your background, go for the urchin. It gives you sleight of hand and stealth proficiencies, as well as city secrets, letting you navigate secret passages in the city, which is a fancy way of saying sewer. We're going to start off as a rogue, letting us grab four skills of our choice, athletics, acrobatics, perception and persuasion are all fitting. Throw expertise on persuasion and athletics for now, doubling your proficiency bonus with those abilities. You also get sneak attack, meaning you can add 1d6 damage to attacks with which you have advantage, and attacks when an ally is within 5 feet of your enemy, if you're using a finesse or a ranged weapon. Your ninjatos will be short swords, they deal 1d6 each, and attacking with your offhand weapon uses your bonus action. Now, keep in mind you're not adding your ability modifier to that damage, yet. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Grab something better next level, but these teen turtles definitely know how to move. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype, and the mastermind makes you a master of tactics, letting you use a help action as a bonus action, and increases the range to 30 feet. This gives an ally advantage on their next ability check or attack roll. Your sneak attack also increases to 2d6. Fourth level rogues can grab a feat. Inspiring leader lets you bolster up to six creatures with temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier plus your level. Level after a rousing 10 minute speech. It's nice that it scales, a lot of feats don't. Bouncing over to fighter now, first level fighters get a fighting style. Two weapon fighting lets you add your ability modifier to the damage of an attack with your offhand weapon. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter levels of bonus action once per long rest, so you can stay up all night if you have to. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make an additional action once per long rest, good for dealing with a horde of evil ninjas. Third level fighters can take a martial archetype and ninjas aren't samurai, but samurai works really well for this ninja, if that makes sense. You can grab another proficiency, insight will help you figure out if your brothers are lying to you. You also get Fighting Spirit, which lets you use a bonus action to give yourself 5 temporary hit points and advantage on attacks for one round. Fourth level fighters can grab another feat. The Skulker feat lets you see in dim light, and your position isn't given away if you miss with a ranged attack. And you can hide while lightly obscured. It's a lot of good things. Some of you might be upset that we haven't taken any monk levels. Well, here you go. First level monks get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifiers. Currently your shell is better, but these aren't exclusive. If you rolled really well, maybe this is better. You also get martial arts, letting you make unarmed attacks with proficiency, and you can use your dex modifier instead of your strength modifier. You can also make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make an attack, but that's the same as dual wielding, and those aren't D6s. That's kind of why I didn't do the monk thing right away. We can just do most of this as a turtle anyway. Speaking of redundancies, level 2 monks get key points, letting you use Step of the Wind to dash or disengage as a bonus action, which you could already do, but this doubles your jump distance as well, I guess. Patient Defense is a little bit better, lets you dodge as a bonus action, and Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed strikes instead of one as a bonus action. You also get unarmored movement, bumping up your speed while you're unarmored. This doesn't give you movement in your shell, that's still zero. Third level monk is what we're here for. You get deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage from ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level. If this turns it to zero, you can throw it back as a monk weapon and a bonus action. 
You can also choose a monastic tradition. The way of the Kensei lets you choose some weapons to be Kensei weapons. For your ranged weapon, make some darts and a shuriken, or use a bow, up to you. It lets you make a Kensei Sha with a key point and a bonus action, adding 1d4 damage to your ranged attacks. If you're holding one of the melee Kensei weapons, you can agile parry, meaning you add 2 to your AC after making an unarmed strike as part of your turn for a little extra defense. You also get the calligraphy skill. Yay! Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce fall damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. You also get an ability score improvement, and we'll take it. Pump up your dexterity for AC, attack, and damage rolls. That'll wrap things up for monk, we'll go back to fighter now. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, meaning you make two attacks with your action instead of just one. Now those bonus action attacks from dual wielding or unarmed attacks from monk are still separate so you can make those too. We're gonna bounce back to Rogue. Fifth level rogues get Uncanny Dodge, letting you reduce damage by half as a reaction if you can see the attacker, and your sneak attack damage also increases to 3d6. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. I'd go for acrobatics and stealth. They're crucial skills for a ninja. Seventh level rogues get evasion, meaning you take half damage on a failed deck save, no damage on successful ones. Your reflexes are too good to get hit by any fireballs. Your sneak attack also increases to 4d6. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement and keep that dexterity going up. Eventually you'll be able to raise your AC above Torta levels, and that's exciting. Seventh level samurai are elegant courtiers, giving you proficiency with wisdom saves and letting you add your wisdom mod modifier to your persuasion checks, which already got a boost from expertise, so you're a very charming turtle. Eighth level fighters get an ability score improvement, cap your dexterity, and start investing in wisdom for AC and persuasion checks. Our capstone is the eighth level of rogue, which is another ability score improvement. I'd actually invest in charisma for better inspiring leader speeches. We need our brothers operating at top form if we're level 20. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you've got a ton of options for reducing damage as a turtle with rogue skills and a 17 AC see on a rogue is really nice. You're also a great leader. With mastermind abilities and inspiring leader HP boosts, you'll be able to get even Raphael to fall in line. Lastly, you've got a bunch of great skills and expertise gets the job done without engaging in combat, helping you stay in the shadows. For weaknesses, you don't get much from those monk levels. Those four levels could go into fighter or rogue for more ability score improvements, extra attacks, just a lot of better options. You're also limited to slashing and piercing damage with nothing magical to get through enemies' thick hides. Finally, you've got lots of options for bonus actions, but still only one bonus action per turn, so you have to pick and choose what to use in each situation. But that strategy is part of being a good leader. Get up front, soak up some hits, and help the team do their best. Just remember, teamwork makes the dream work, and you're less effective without your family. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We've got tons of new builds coming out before Endgame, so check back for those. Personally, my fondest memories of the Turtles are from the NES game, so let's make some more Nintendo characters. Vote in the poll for Mario, Zelda, or Samus. Come back Saturday. We are in the Endgame now.